Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. I'm still Eric Scarvin, your host, guys. Thanks for joining us as we work our way into the winter series for 24-25. Hope you guys are having a great winter so far. Really excited to have one of my longtime buddies back. I think he's been on the show coming up on 20 years will be our anniversary for The Local Show in February. And I think I've had this gentleman on since day one, just about. He's an Olympian. He is the founder of the Chris Klug Foundation. And he is a local real estate professional. I want to welcome back Chris Klug to the local show. Thanks, Good to Eric. see you, buddy. Good to see you, too. Happy winter time. Happy winter, man. And Off this to is, a great start. This is it. I mean, historic snow going into Thanksgiving. Yeah. Now we got Summer for Life, which we're going to talk about on the show, coming up this weekend, which we call the kickoff to winter. Kickoff to winter. You're right. We also had a big kickoff to winter occasion this week with Klaus Obermeier's 105th birthday. Yeah. Awesome. So I wanted to give a shout out and a happy birthday to Klaus. He's amazing. He's one of my heroes. Do you want a, a couple words for Klaus? And I know he's yeah, been a I big him. influence I mean, for he's, you. He uh, he's got it figured out. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I always love what he uh, what he says about changing your perspective and changing your attitude <sighs> as it comes to uh, when it relates to you know challenges or challenging personalities or you know difficult situations. Yeah. And instead of just you know, going on the offensive and, and, and blame game or whatnot, saying, hey, yeah. let's, let's look inside and say, hey, can I change my attitude a little bit? Can I approach this differently to maybe make this work better? And I just, when you're in negotiations and, uh, and, um, and, and communication, uh, we all are in, in some yeah. degree. I think that's just a great reminder. I like how he, he's just got this almost undeterrable impermeable, unharmed, uh, positive attitude. Yeah. It's just, it just goes with positivity. And he says it's a choice, Eric. It's a right, choice right. to how we respond to situations. And I think a lot of that comes from his Aikido yes. philosophy and training. And, and that's yes. still, I know, a big part of his longevity, swimming, Aikido, and, and skiing right up until 102, 103. Yeah. And uh, I just think he's an amazing guy. And has, uh, has done so much for the ski and snowboard industry and so much for this community. And yeah. uh, he's a real hero of mine. Yeah, he says also back to the business thing and negotiating, putting yourself in the other person's feet mm -hmm. or shoes, I guess, would be the better expression. Boots in his case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put yourself in the other person's ski boots, you yeah. know, or his hiking boots. But no, really trying to come in from that angle is interesting because it's a, non it's a very non-selfish, uh, very aware yeah. of look at it from like win-win. He wants to create win-win scenarios. Sure. He talks about that in business or in mm -hmm. life, come in it from the other person's approach. Cause I know I come in a lot of times, um, maybe a little judgmental. You know, I think I know as a, as a long time teacher and we instructor and guide, you know, Hey, I know. And, and it's a me, me culture that we're right, in. Right. And Good Ernie point. Fierwald, one of my mentors and partners with us and so my stuff with these yeah. international realty, he always says that he says, you know, we look for win-wins. Yeah, it's got to be good for you for it yeah. to be good and good for me for this to be a fair and good deal for both parties. Right. And uh, I always I always reflect on that. I think that's good advice and sustainable for the long term. 100 percent. Yeah, because we want to be penny wise and dollar wise. Yeah. We want we want things to not only just work once, but to work over and over and over. And that is appreciating the other person's yeah. position. That doesn't mean you're going to necessarily agree with them 100 percent. But that's where it's a real um you know, great uh, perspective from mm -hmm. him. So the positivity, the daily swimming. Uh, he's been on the show so many times. I've been so honored to have him on for almost 20 years. And, yeah. you know, yeah, a half a mile a day. In one year, I swim the distance from Aspen to Denver. The next year, I swim back, he says. He's amazing. He's just an incredible. I was in uh, Maui last week uh, doing a little kite foiling and wing, wing foiling before the season. And I remember talking to him about that in years past. Right. And he used to love to go to Kanaha. And I remember at, at 90, approaching 100, he wanted to learn how to kiteboard. He was an <sighs> avid windsurfer and loved right. the water, very comfortable swimmer right. and, uh, and a confident waterman and uh, loved to windsurf his whole life. And he's like, man, I'm going to learn how to kite. 
And he was 95 at the time. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what? Like, oh, my gosh. That's really? Attitude, but though. They, they that's talk yeah, about exactly. people always learning. Yeah. You know, yeah, always yeah, yeah. trying new things. And, and that's also what triggers, you know, neuron pathways and, and can also, you know, potentially help, uh, you know, offset, you know, some, some Alzheimer's, some, some, yes. some dementia, some, some damage to, uh, to the brain trying new things and, and firing new pathways. And, exactly. you know, I always think about just, just simple things like we always, we start our car with our right hand or we always eat with our right hand, mix it up, try with your left hand sometimes. And I shared with you earlier, um, I'm bouncing back from a knee surgery in the spring and I'm not a hundred percent yet, but I'll be ready for summit for life on Saturday. But I skinned up to Sam's knob over in snowmass today for my friend's um, birthday for lunch together. And I was snowboarding down and, and didn't feel great. So, I just rode backwards down. It felt a lot better. So <laughs> it's good to be able to go switch sometimes or eat with your left hand. And right, sometimes right. we need those skills to adjust in life. I actually think about that in recent years. It's like, I'm just going to work my left hand because you think about what if my right arm gets injured or something like that? Or, you know, it's and it's better to be balanced right on both sides. 100%. We're usually dominant. A lot of us on our right side. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the other end of the age spectrum. You've got two kids, 13 and 11, Bali and River, yes. your daughter and son. And, you know, bringing them up as an Olympian and a bronze medalist, no less. You know, I guess generally what's that like when you want to raise your kids up? Of course, you're, you skew towards athletics mm -hmm. and, and, and trend towards that in your life, and it's a big part of your personality. How do you, I guess, share athletics, um, introduce, you know, encourage, and how would that... Um, advice overflow maybe to how other people might want to raise their kids or maybe think about raising their kids. We've got a generation coming up in a different kind of world and, you know, kind of maybe some advice that you've given them and you might, you might offer others. I think it's uh, being athletic and being outdoors is a way of, of life for Missy and I and for so many of us that cherish this community. Uh, and I, I'm thinking, you know, Bali and I walked to Crested Butte together, my daughter. It's amazing. Every year she's been alive um, and have done 14ers now the last few years. And I think it's a fun challenge together. And obviously when the first three or four years we went to Crested Butte together, she was on my, in my backpack. Right. And uh, then walked a couple hundred yards when she was three or four and got back in the backpack. And now she's <laughs> done it. Uh, she does it on her own. Um, but I think it's, it's part of our culture here. It's part of who we are, being active, being outdoors in this spectacular mountain environment. Um, but now they're starting to compete. They both ski raced and, and did some Nordic and ski racing for years. And uh, my son is now super into hockey and loving that. And uh, my daughter's playing lacrosse and, and volleyball. And, and I think we just have a few rules in our house when it comes to sports. First of all, you know, have fun. Yeah. Um, you do your very best. Um, be a good sportsman. You know, yeah. be a, be a good sport, yeah. uh, and come home. And so, whatever you do, you know, I, I really subscribe to that Norwegian philosophy. And uh, one of the reasons they're so successful in the Winter Olympics is they don't push their kids too hard, right. and and they really don't even encourage competition until they're almost teenagers. Oh. It has to be about the fun, the camaraderie the teamwork and just the, the joy of the sport and being active and participating with your friends. Um, and then when they're teenagers, we're now, my daughter just turned 13 and we're entering the whole uh, social media, cell phone <laughs> challenge and all that, and which yeah. we're, we haven't been a part of. And, and it's an interesting conversation. But in any case, she's really driven now for volleyball and, and really enjoying that. And when they hit the teenage years, it's got to come from them. It can't be the dad saying, get better. We're doing this camp. We're doing that camp. Right. Even though I'm competitive and you want to. And sometimes you just got to bite your tongue and just shut up. Right. And just let them make some mistakes and have fun. It's such a metaphor for life. You and I have talked about that. And uh, it's just sports has taught me so much and given me so many opportunities. And um, I reflect all the time in business and um, in, in my relationships back on my sporting career. And I think about the lessons I learned from that. It's just, it's been an amazing ride. Fun has to be number one, right? hundred percent. Because that's just what kind of sports are about. It's mm -hmm. about fun. It's about being healthy. It's yeah. about being fit. You know, if you take it up to higher levels, you can actually get really fit and really strong. Yeah. But I think fun, number one. And I like that Norwegian reference, too, because that just seems 
so right for that culture, for sure. and for I sure. totally appreciate that. Chris, we've got to take a quick break. And come, I think you said also come home, which means be safe, come home. right? Yeah, come yeah, home in one piece. That means be safe. Yeah, come <laughs> home in one piece. There you go. We're going to take a quick break. Our only break of the show, guys. I want to thank our winter underwriters for making these shows happen each week. We shoot here at Grassroots Community Network at the Red Brick Center for the Arts in Aspen. We've got Haiti Children, Klug Properties, Local Spirits, Paradise Bakery, Picking County Solid Way Center, Sundog Athletics, and the Wheeler Opera House. We'll be gone just for two minutes, you guys, and then we are going to get set for Summit for Life this Saturday, talk about the local uphilling culture and what the ultimate gift is, so don't go away. At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. Living in Aspen is more than just owning a home. It's about embracing a way of life. I'm Chris Klug, and I've spent my life immersed in everything this mountain community has to offer, from skiing and snowboarding to art and culture. I understand what makes Aspen special. Discover the Aspen lifestyle with a broker who truly understands it. Want to live like a local? Help us reduce food waste, a major contributor to climate change. You can help in three simple ways. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. Buy ugly fruits and vegetables. Reduce, Reduce food, food waste. waste. Live, Live like, like a, a local. local. Locally owned and operated, Local Spirits has low prices, a convenient location next to Exxon gas station with parking, and is Aspen's exclusive cigar dealer. 3% back with our loyalty program. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's adventure sports school and snowshoeing specialists since 1996. Brought to you by Paradise Bakery and Gelateria, serving Aspen for 42 years. Welcome to the local show. People you work with. Thanks for sticking with us here on The Local Show, guys, as we work our way into our winter series running mid-November to mid-April, paralleling the ski season. See how I do that? Anyway, I um, want to thank Chris for being here. You bet. Very busy week, to say the least, for Chris coming back into town. And Summit for Life is this Saturday. Summit for Life, though, is representative of this uphill culture mm. that we take pride in locally. And can you speak to that um, just briefly, the kind of the uniqueness of our local uphill culture? Well, I think it's amazing that Aspen Skiing Company and the Crown family, you know, allow us to uphill on all four of our mountains. There's a few a huge rules here and there. Yeah. Um, and furthermore, to do it uh, on three of the mountains with our pets before operating hours, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite ways to start the day with, Mochi the Wonder Woodle. <laughs> I love we'll, it. We'll go up uh, before 8.30 in Snowmass up to Sam's. And, nice. And I just grab her and snowboard down with her. How cool. And uh, what a great way to get exercise for, for her and for me. Uh, uh, but, no, very grateful. And, and, you know, I love going up and down. And uh, I've done most of the power of fours, both the mountain bike and, uh, and the ski mo. And there are some fit, hardcore <laughs> athletes in, uh, in this town. And it's... You know what I like about it? It's different from cycling and, and different from a lot of sports where we can go for a skin and you can be down in minutes. But I like the social aspect of it. Unlike right. cycling, you're like, Eric, Eric, how's the ride? Here, we're just walking side by side, chit-chatting the whole way. You get to the top, yeah. rip your skins off, and you're back to the car in five minutes. Yeah. So yeah. I love the efficiency of it, and I love the social aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah, right. You're slowing it down to where, to where you have... You know that opportunity to. You might be to, sucking to be, wind, but you can still converse. <laughs> right, whereas on the bike you're moving, you got to yeah. be more focused. You know that's what I like about snowshoeing too, because it really slows you down. 
to where you can look around, mm -hmm. you can, you know, be really safe, you can socialize. It's not as technical and like speed loaded, like say yeah. mountain biking, totally. for example. And the other thing I like too, and you can probably relate to this, is the peace. Especially if you're by yourself. It's mm -hmm. so peaceful, especially early in the morning. It's the best way you to see start the, the sun day. coming up. It's a magical time. It is, indeed. It really is magical. Yeah. So we've got Summer for Life coming up this Saturday, December our, our 7th. Our 19th correct? annual, December 19th 7th. 19th annual. Yeah. We've got the reel from last year's, which would be the 18th annual. Yes. That gives a great overview of the event. So let's go ahead and check that out next. All right, Aspen, you ready for the 18th annual Aspen Summer for Life? We are going to hike up this mountain behind us and try to make it to the top. little adventure, it's something fun and different to do, and it supports an excellent cause. This is going to be amazing. I'm so excited. 18th annual event nighttime race up Aspen Mountain. We're going to have a great time. we got 366 registered racers. It's an honor. It's so exciting to be here. A lot of energy in the air, and snow is falling again, guys. So it couldn't be a better night for racing. different at night versus the daytime you got that kind of lunar energy and tonight we've got snow in the air which adds even more so it's it's quite the nighttime adventure snow is beautiful glad to be here supporting the Duluth foundation it's uh, good to break a sweat and support a good cause and uh, good to be up here we think we are tougher than we think we are it was worth it Foundation is incredible. It's been really inspiring to get to meet other people in the community. There's not a lot of folks that are my age uh, that have had the experience that I've had, and so getting to meet other people and uh, be inspired by what others are doing uh, since their transplant has been really incredible. So I really enjoyed the MC in that reel. It was really fun to help job. announce the race. And you didn't freeze to death. <laughs> Had my dog Marley up there. Yeah. And uh, we've got a picture, actually, of Marley and I in the announcing, too. And, and my dad always loves to, uh, loves to help as well. Oh, that so. was just so much fun. Yeah. And the energy. Let's talk about that a little bit because there's like a nighttime lunar energy, mm -hmm. right? That's unique. Can you talk to us a little bit about the, like, the vibration and the atmosphere? Well, uh, you know, we, this is a fundraiser for Chris Klug Foundation, and we rely on the dollars that are raised to help us with our mission throughout the whole year. And we do hundreds of events all over the country and uh, really proud of the work we're doing. But this is also, like you said, a kickoff to the winter, and it's a celebration of life, a celebration of second chances. And there's a, a number of transplant recipients donor family members, uh, as well as support family members like my family that helped me get through my transplant and lots of other families. Um, so the vibe there is very much a party and a celebration. Right. And we'll have racers doing it from 40 minutes to almost three hours and everywhere in between, some in costume and some in, <laughs> you know, lycra or whatever. Um, but first and foremost, it's a big party. And uh, as you know, we've got... Uh, um, the, the live music up there and a great dinner by Chef Matt and the Little Nell team and dessert by Paradise Bakery. And um, it's just, uh, it's an amazing event. So really grateful to this community and everyone that's participated. It's our 19th year, 21 years with Storm the Stars. Yeah. And uh, CKF has now been around for 21 years as of this October. And we're a national organization with about a half a million dollar a year budget. But a lot of our support, a lot of what enables us to do our work nationwide comes from Aspen and the Roaring Fork Valley and the Western Slope. We'll have about 25% of our participants this weekend that'll come from outside of Aspen, from the Front Range and other areas of Colorado and other areas of the country. Right. And so that's another nice thing is that you and I uh, are fortunate to live 
in this community and we uphill all the time and it's it's yeah. such a huge part of our livelihood and, and of our lives and, and that of our of our families and our friends. But there are people that will be hiking on Saturday night for the first time ever. <laughs> yeah, that's and mind, it's damn intimidating. Mind blowing to yeah, think about that. It's intimidating. It's intimidating. But uh, what a great accomplishment when they get to the top, especially folks coming from sea level or, uh, you know, transplant candidates or recipients that have never done something like this. So uh, I hope our uh, community welcomes everybody and we have a great weekend. I know the weather's going to be perfect. It's going to be perfect. We're going to be under the stars. Um, mm -hmm. I think during the race, too, there's like this other energy. Like there's like the energy around the participants, the yeah. supporters, the transplant community, the top of the mountain, there's the party and the sun deck. But then when you're on the course, there's also that just kind of like moving at night, moving up the mountain, watching these headlights go like that. I like yeah. to turn mine off, actually. So I can try to disappear and get away from some guys. It's actually worked a few times. I've never used it. If you can get a big enough gap and then turn yeah. your light off, you're literally out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> we have night eyes this year. Oh, we had cool. the red uh, fluorescent, oh, yeah. you know, like necklaces this year. It's lime green, which is the official color of organ donation. Very cool. So you'll see uh, a lime green streak of, you know, almost 400 racers going up Aspen Mountain on Saturday night. So. And there's teams going on. Yeah. Um, there's... Um, like you see, the families mm -hmm. of uh, transplant recipients, uh, transplant donors. Uh, we've got some fun imagery of all these kind of different scenes during the race yeah. event night. We're going to have a special tribute to Susie Budsey and her family, too. Yeah. Susie is the uh, founding member of Team Joyful yeah. with uh, her sister Katie and, yes. um, and Claude and, and all of these yeah. uh, Team Joyful team members that started with us from day one. They've been with us for 19 years and uh, have been such a huge part of, of this event, helped us raise a lot of funds and a lot of awareness for CKF and organ donation, and so grateful. So we're going to honor her. We sadly uh, lost she her is. to cancer uh, this past summer, as you know, Yeah. and uh, she's been such a big part of this race. So we're going to uh, celebrate Susie as well on Saturday night. <laughs> I don't know if you knew this, but yeah. I went to Catholic grade school yeah. with Susie Wabaszewski, yeah. and Katie Wabi works at Obermeyer. Yeah. And so, actually, I go all the way back to my childhood with Susie. So, you've, you know, it's so sad. Um, to, and I miss her, you know. Yeah, um, she's an awesome gal. But, you know, that kind of goes into the mission because the ultimate gift, like I said when we tossed a break, is the gift of life. And mm -hmm. we can sign up as organ donors. Can you talk about that? Because some people can't take part in Summit for Life. Yes. They, they may want to, and we'll talk about the different ways to take part in that. Yeah. You can ride up the gondola. You can hike up the mountain. Or you can just, just do snowed in if you can't show yeah, up to ride, in for life. ride or whatnot. You can still support other racers or the cause and, uh, and be involved. But just generally supporting mm -hmm. organ donation. You know, can you speak to that about, you know, uh, speaking to your family about your wishes, you know, things like that? I think sometimes people are a little confused. What is it Chris Klug Foundation does? And we do three things. Registration, education, and inspiration. Um, and that's, I think this event embodies all three of those. Yeah. Um, so what, what we're really trying to do is encourage everybody to have the conversation. Let your wishes be known and document that decision, whatever it is. Um, and so we host events around the country. We do things like the toolkit for teachers, donor dudes, donor dudes game night, our, uh, our CKF awards, our ambassador uh, panel tours, really to educate people about the importance of organ donation, help dispel many of the myths and misconceptions, and then go out there through New York events. We just had 10 runners uh, run the New York City Marathon. We had uh, 22 racers at Leadville this year, plus five at the run. Um, help and inspire and, and letting people know this is what's possible after a transplant. And as right. you know, I'm, I'm never shy to come on your show to share my story because I thought it was a death sentence when I was uh, diagnosed with a liver transplant. And then I realized, okay, you can survive it, but I figured your quality of life is going to suck. Right. And uh, I'm dealing with a little bit of a knee injury now as I sit here and rub my knee, <laughs> but there's nothing I can't do. And, and I won my bronze medal after my transplant. Right. And I'm not chirping, but I love to chirp about it because yeah. maybe there's just one person facing the same thing I did almost 25 years ago, thinking your life is over. And they're like, wait a second, this guy won a medal after his transplant. He does Leadville every summer. He does Power of Four. He's doing Summit for Life on Saturday night. Yeah. Maybe my, my hopes and my dreams and my goals aren't over. And that's a big part of what our foundation is about as exactly. well. Exactly. Hope. I, yeah. That is such a big word. It's and huge. inspiration. Yeah. So there's hope 
and you can go to how very high levels, right? 100%. So it's all that. So tell your family. Uh, State of Colorado, I guess you would do that through your, also through your driver's You can do license. that through chrisklubefoundation.org. Yep, Chris Klub And Foundation. we have a map on there for every state in the country where you can register through your state registry, um, donatelifecolorado.org. Um, Colorado is the highest percentage of Oregon donations. I'm in very the proud of that. When we started, it was under 50%. Today, we lead the country as the number one uh, donor designation or, or registration state for organ donors in the country at over 70%. That's amazing. And I'd like to think that, uh, that you and, and myself and our foundation, our volunteer board, and, and this community and, and 19 years of Summit for Life and 21 years of CKF has played a role in that. So uh, also another important website, uh, chrisklugfoundation.org. Yes. Is, is your uh, foundation's website, obviously, but summitforlife.org. If people still want, there's still room to register? There's still room. If As of uh, Jesse uh, Rochelle, our executive director, yeah. gave me a, a few facts before I came to do the show. We're over 325 registered as of right now. Wow. Um, we have a capacity of about 450, I think it is. So okay. we will sell it out. It's getting there. Um, so don't wait. Um, but yeah, summitforlife.org is how you register for the event. You can register uh, to ride the gondola to the top. Your ski pass won't get you up. Right. You need to register for this special event. Um, or you can support another racer or sign up as a racer yourself. Right, and it kicks off this Saturday, December 7th. 5.30 is the start from the base of Aspen We'll Mountain. do a 10-second countdown and start sharp at, uh, at 5.30. After the national anthem, we'll do a nice um, live life, give life uh, photo in the bottom with all of the transplant recipients and donor families and, and transplant candidates, which is always very powerful. We're down to one minute, but the, isn't there also like a, uh, like a best dressed award or there something is, that happens? There is, there is. You're exactly right. Right before the start? So bust out your costume. So get the costumes out too. I had Kenny from South Park costume for uh, <laughs> Halloween this year. Maybe I'll rock that. I might go Bob Marley. That would be good. I have a, a dreadlock. I remember you as Bob Marley at, uh, at past Halloween's. You no, you're Bob. kidding me. Yeah. Wow. Years That's ago. a good memory. So you were a good Bob Marley, and I, let's face it. Yeah, we did that. One year there was like 12 of us Rastas. Yeah. Anyway, did you have fun on the show today, buddy? Man, the time was so fast. I always love catching up with you. Yeah, I always, thanks for having I me I always on. enjoy it. It's an honor. Love it's what a you do. true pleasure. Baked you cookies even. Are you trying to slow me down at Summit for Life That's this year? It. I mean, if I eat all these, I'll be an extra half That's hour. That's at least a couple pounds right there. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I need right now. <laughs> you can delegate those accordingly. My so. kids will uh, help me with these. <laughs> You'll be a hero when, uh, when those guys get home. And if I show up empty-handed, I'm in uh, serious trouble. Thank you, Chris yeah. Klug. Thanks, Eric. Check out summitforlife.org. You guys hope to see you Saturday night at Summit for Life. And thanks for watching this week on The Local Show. At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. Community is at the heart of Aspen, and I take great pride in being a part of it. I'm Chris Klug, and as a lifelong Aspen resident, my connection to this community runs deep. My involvement in local events and charities isn't just about giving back. It's about staying in tune with the community I love. Allow me to help you find your place in our incredible community together. Join the string beans in helping reduce food waste in our community. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. Ask for smaller portions in restaurants. Take home leftovers to eat later. Donate unopened food to our food bank. Let's work in concert to reduce food waste. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School and Snowshoeing Specialists since 1996. Welcome to the local show, people you work with, people you know. Something that we're is not at Sullivan's. Come no, on, no, no, Sullivan, man. No, it's man, not, no, we're not it's doing not that trip. No, the Tiffany no, dude. Network. We're doing, no, we're doing our TV thing. I
Grab the people. The writing on the wall. Whoa. Get to the people. Grass We, we could do a show about blind. this fringe. She is blind. It's on the fringe. We, even you're though he's we blind. Are blind too. Man, I just I'm like, we're blind to the people until we get something out there. I just that they got can inner tremblings when you said that, man. So we have to open our eyes. Whoa. That's right. Open and our open eyes. the eyes of the people with yeah. the TV.